Good morning. Guten Tag. Buongiorno. Then we try, you know, the whole routine I go through with all the languages. Let me tell y'all. I just won my lawsuit. One of many. And how I won, how I won the lawsuit, it was about civil rights. And so a lot of times with court cases, people will try to stop you from knowing, first of all, I'm Barbie. I'm the real Barbie. Special shout out to um, that vendor, that wonderful black man. I support black businesses and black. And um, yeah, on Hollywood Boulevard, I brought a bunch of different graphic shirts that he designed. Put together, doesn't matter. Support black businesses, yeah. Also support black attorneys and support black law students. And I believe I deserve double protection, triple protection, as much protection as I can get. Because one of the things I'm investigating with civil rights, especially with courthouses, all this overriding of people's rights. So I did a uh, what was considered an undercover investigation to where went to the courthouse. I want to file a court case. I was told on camera by a court employee. I can't file pro se, excuse me. Their exact words was, it is illegal for me to file pro se. Mm -hmm. Are you sure about that? Number one, you're not even an attorney. Number two, you can't tell anybody if something's illegal. You might be here legally in my country. Think about that. And so here's how I won the case. Not only did I catch the court employees trying to prevent me from filing a lawsuit, there was, uh, I visited the arbitration office, the mediation office. There are a number of complaints about people stating when they speak to their attorney or when they are in arbitration or mediation, their rights are violated. I believe it. I have a proof. So that's the second function. That's why I've been doing all these field trips to police stations and courthouses all across different jurisdictions to see what are the actual issues. Okay, so the next thing that I found out after that, you have a lot of judges, like Judge Smith, who, well, this judge apparently has gone from another jurisdiction, from another jurisdiction. How is this? How is this possible? So what I've been investigating in Maryland is what actually occurred in Pennsylvania with the cash for kids. I'm also investigating what has been happening across this country in D.C., New York, L.A., voter suppression, voter intimidation. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that who elects judges? Presidents appoint judges. So Barack Obama appointed this judge, Judith Smith, to the D.C. Superior Court many years ago. And unfortunately, didn't work well for them. They had a number of complaints, civil rights complaints. I was there. I also worked with the D.C. Public Defender's Office and the Maryland Public Defender's Office in investigating these claims because, as you all know, in Montgomery County, Maryland, there is a prosecutor named John McCarthy. He gave a job to a judge, Judge Boykin. You would think, oh, that's just, you know, unethical. It goes beyond that. The scope that a judge has in your case is pretty much unlimited, right? And so if the prosecutor and the judges are siding and colluding together, which they are, how many people right now are incarcerated in Maryland, in Montgomery County, Prince George's County, um, all over the, the state with corrupt prosecutors? and corrupt judges, but there's more, the courthouse. So the courthouse is where you go to have your rights heard. There are criminal matters, there are civil matters. So when someone is filing paperwork in a criminal case, that information is supposed to be kept under lock and key. You're not a good custodian of documents. And a lot of times, rather than have a public defender represent people, they will actually go get a private attorney, a panel attorney. These attorneys are not vetted. They do not have to show that they're actually experts or able to represent you in that subject matter. In fact, in Washington, D.C. right now, with the D.C. Superior Court, you don't have to be a member of the D.C. Bar to represent someone in a D.C. hearing. That doesn't make sense because here in California, which is the hardest bar that I'm going to take to become an attorney in California, if I don't pass this bar, I'm not licensed. So you have to be licensed to practice law. A lot of these attorneys, they're not licensed or their license has been disbarred or it's been reinstated and it's gonna be uh, taken away again. 
or with judges. You see a lot that's going on with these judges. A lot of these judges are incompetent, they're corrupt, and they uh, will get away with it because they feel, I'm the judge, what can you do? Judges have the power to lock you up, hold you in contempt, order and do a number of things. And so a lot of complaints have come through the Department of Justice. A lot of complaints have come through Office of Civil Rights that people are saying whenever they speak up in a court case, they're being issued a mental health condition and sent to a hospital or told they, they need a diagnosis. Well, it's a good thing that I did all that research about the Museum of Psychiatry in Los Angeles, California, and it talked about the background behind this. Even before World War II, with uh, the Nazi experiments and different doctors, it wasn't just German doctors, it was American doctors. American doctors joined this and blaming other people because when Project Paperclip occurred, it was a small handful of German doctors. Gutzendorf, because I have German in my ancestry, uh, that were blamed and accused of doing all these crimes against humanities. However, you still have that going on today with people pretending to be doctors, like Dr. Oz, Dr. Phil, just to name a few. Judge Judy. Mm -hmm. Judge Judy's not a real judge. They're not. And so part of uh, what I have finally, when I say I won my case, I'm closing the investigation into the inquiry from the Office of Department of Justice Civil Rights. Yes, Maryland has violated a number of human rights, civil rights, as well as Louisiana, as well as D.C., as well as California, as well as Oklahoma, Colorado, New York, Chicago, Florida, Fulton County, Georgia. The list goes on and on. So I also um, am active duty with the United States Marine Corps. And so part of this investigation also goes to the Department of Defense. I'm actually scheduled to go up to Camp Pendleton today and I'm about to get ready and get on my way because I'm Barbie. So not only do I do law and military, but you know I do what's called advocacy. And I still have my um, schoolwork cybersecurity to do. Always keep your documentation. Always have a video or a photo record of everything because believe it or not, documents get misplaced. A lot of the courts, they operate remotely and they use Zoom. Zoom is not always the most secure, but one of the things that I actually caught, and I have to go say hi to uh, San Diego PD. What's up, y'all? I'll be there today. I will be there before I leave. Um, I had got a call from someone that represented themselves as a Montgomery County Sheriff. And they told me in 2020, well, 2021, when I applied to be a sheriff, deputy, trainee for Orange County, stand up Orange County, California, I, hate. I was told that uh, I had to turn myself in on Zoom. First of all, you can't turn yourself in on Zoom, dummy, number one. Number two, if in fact you have a warrant for someone's arrest, the proper authority to um, obtain them would be federal or it would have to be the United States Marshals, or it would have to be the actual um, police department or the sheriff. So in different jurisdictions, you know, the sheriff has different roles. In Maryland, the sheriff does not come to get you, nor does the sheriff call you. So one of the things I found out, it's an impersonator. I don't know if you guys have heard of the case of Jeremy DeWitt out of Florida. So Jeremy DeWitt is a serial cop impersonator. He's been caught by the police. He's been caught by the community. He's been caught by everyone impersonating the police and trying to lock people up and give tickets. And he's a fucking psychopath. Well, his father and his family, he thinks they protect him, you know, especially if you have judges and a number of things high in your family. You cannot have that. I don't care who your father is. Your father could be a Supreme Court justice. You're going to prison. 
commit a crime. Or if it's a civil matter, I'll just take everything you got. You ain't got much, but I'll take it all. So, you always want to make sure that you document everything. Who did you talk to? What did they state? And then you also want to look up the applicable rule of law. Love my incense. So because I travel a lot and I work on different cases, I make sure that all of my data and all of my court cases are uploaded. So that way, if I'm working with an attorney in Florida or from working with an attorney uh, in New Orleans or Georgia, which I am, I am able to work with them in real time. So as we know, right now in Louisiana, there has been um, the issue of civil rights and voter suppression. It's happening. I know that it's happening because I'm an election judge. So I wear many hats. So in the state of Maryland, I'm an election judge, which is why I have to get back to Maryland to watch the polls. Make sure you don't steal or have dead people vote. It's a real thing. Uh, people gerrymandering, using uh, voter suppression, using um, tactics of the 60s and 70s when it comes to civil rights. That's why I'm studying civil rights. And so by me being a, uh, an election judge, challenge me. That means I can challenge you. And now I have standing in the state of California and Maryland for this lawsuit. So I will contact the uh, powers that be in Louisiana, New Orleans, and say, I got another one. You cannot violate people's civil rights. You cannot violate their constitutional rights. You cannot be racist. You cannot be sexist. You cannot say and do whatever you want to do. And if you feel that you, wait, hold on. And if you feel that you can do these things, well, then you have to come to court. And so this morning, I had to wake up, court in DC. DC is three hours, you know, three hours behind. Spoke to the judge. You already won your case. Congratulations. So that's how you win a lawsuit. I didn't even have to show up to win. So it will behoove you to educate yourself. You know, you don't have to go to law school to know the laws, but you do have to go to law school to be a lawyer and to practice the law. So there are quite a few judges and prosecutors. Where's your careers? They're gone. They're gone. It's funny. Just like I see the same people that was here a few months ago, they're here now. Same thing when I was at the other hostel in LA from New Orleans. So people pay attention to my videos and follow me around. I don't care. It just further proves my point in my cases. So remember, it's not about what you know. It's about what you can prove in a courtroom. In a courtroom but also you got to be mindful of your conduct outside of the courtroom because the other side will try dirty tricks try to get you to be provoked to be criminal be in jail so you can't make it to court well fortunately unfortunately we have seen a few an issue with that and when I say we I'm going to the NAACP haha -ha. When I say we, I'm also a part of the uh, 
Association of Jewish Lawyers. I'm also a part of the Association of Muslim Lawyers. I'm also like in every kind of, you know, law group that you can get. So you better watch out for the NAACP. You better watch out for everyone because they're coming. You can't suppress voters and you cannot steal elections. So it wasn't that this whole Donald Trump and Sleepy Joe election. There were a lot of elections stolen over the past few years. I remember Al Gore. That was the first election that was actually stolen that I can recall. So dead people do not vote. And I have the voter records to prove that. You cannot gerrymander a district. You cannot hold a special election and sneak in there like the Louisiana governor did. You can't. And there's also that Montgomery County executive, Mark Earlrich. You're out of a job, sweetie. You stole the election, I have proof. Challenge me. So what I do to make sure that legally I have standing, I don't wanna be Rudy Giuliani and get sued for defamation. I make sure that when I review the cases, as I have the case file now, that everything is on the up and up. You know, that everything has been properly filed with the court. And so, there's another airplane going up. is legal. The police, the courts, they do not have the right to harass you, to bring about charges on you, or to even uh, monitor your activity. And when I say that, as we speak now in the state of California, they've passed a lot of taxes on marijuana, medical marijuana. So if you, in fact, have a prescription for medical marijuana, Nobody has the right to ask you about that. Nobody has the right to question that. And nobody has the right to even know that, especially not the government. Yeah, protected by HIPAA. A lot of airplanes. And that means that in the state of Maryland, there's a lot of corruption cases with the Maryland State Police stopping people, saying uh, that they smell weed or marijuana. First of all, if it's not an illegal substance in the state, which it's not, the stop is illegal. It's unconstitutional. You're violating someone's constitutional right, their medical rights. So if you live in a jurisdiction, not just Maryland or D.C. or California or Colorado, a lot of places. Where you're allowed to possess a certain amount. I highly recommend that you know the limits. Like right now in California, you can possess up to one ounce. You can buy one ounce a day per dispensary. Well, Per day. So theoretically, a person could buy an ounce, which is 28 grams a day. Nobody needs that much marijuana. But what I'm saying is that why is it the state is passing all these taxes? California. California has the most taxes anywhere. They actually have a exit tax when businesses leave California. Kind of like a shakedown. They also have a uh, tax that they're trying to propose on unrealized gains. As soon as this airplane goes away, I'm going to break down that part. And then I got to get to the University of California. I'm scheduled to be there today. Alrighty. So, back to what I was saying with taxes. So, on whenever you sell an asset, right, or it's transferred, the gains are at that point realized. But until it's sold or transferred, your gains are not realized. So you cannot tax something that hasn't occurred. And I sat in on a hearing about this a few months ago. California has the exit tax. They're trying to tax uncapitalized gains. And yesterday, 
I looked into how much taxes are these dispensaries charging? It's absurd, absurd. That also forces dispensaries out of business. Majority of the marijuana that comes in this, that is grown in this country, created in laboratories. If you don't believe me, you don't have to, because here it is right here. It tells you the different farms. This came from a farm. A lot of it comes from laboratories where they're making hybrids and clones and stuff that really hasn't been tested and you really don't know the effects of it. However, however, the government, goddamn airplane, I'll be on one second. So this is the last part of the video, because I gotta get ready to go. The government doesn't have the right or the police to harass you about anything, but particularly about marijuana. So one of the cases that I'm looking at is just that. In the state of Maryland, a lot of people have been stopped by the state troopers off of the smell of marijuana. And unfortunately that's illegal. So the case that I had to wake up this morning <laughs> at six o'clock in the morning, it's all right here. And I won that suit, pro se. So I'm not an attorney yet. I'm still in law school. But I'm thinking I'm going to be a really good attorney. I'm already catching attorneys fucking up. That's what you do. So I got to get ready to go uh, to University of California, San Diego. I will see you guys in a few hours. Have a great day.